Today we will discuss what we call uniform circular motion. What is uniform circular motion? An object goes around in a circle, has radius r, the object is here, this is the velocity, it's a vector, perpendicular, and later in time when the object is here, the velocity has changed, but the speed has not changed. We introduce t, what we call the period, of course it's in seconds, which is the time to go around once. We introduce the frequency f, which we call the frequency, which is the number of rotations per second. And so the units are either second minus one, as most physicists would call it hertz. And so frequency is one divided by t. We also introduce angular velocity, omega, which we call angular velocity. Angular velocity means not how many meters per second, but how many radians per second. So since there are two pi radians in one circumference, in one full circle, and it takes t seconds to go around once, it is immediately obvious that omega equals two pi divided by t. This is something that I would like you to remember. Omega equals two pi divided by t. Two pi radians in capital T seconds. The speed, v, is of course the circumference, two pi r, divided by the time to go around once, but since two pi divided by t is omega, you can also write for this omega r. And this is also something that I want you to remember. These two things you really want to remember. The speed is not changing, but the velocity vector is changing, Therefore, there must be an acceleration that is non-negotiable. This acceleration that is necessary to make the change in the velocity vector is always pointing towards the center of the circle. We call it centripetal acceleration. Centripetal, pointing towards the center, and here also pointing towards the center, it's a vector. And the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration equals v squared divided by r, which is this v, and therefore it's also omega square r. And so now we have three equations, and those are the only three you really would like to remember. <coughs> 